It is a labyrinth backstage, guys, but we got them all here. Let's all get comfortable on this very comfy couch. I cannot, I simply cannot do them all justice in introducing them, so I am going to have everyone go ahead and introduce themselves. Anna, we're going to start with you. Go ahead and introduce oh, yourself. great. Hey, I'm Anna Gasteyer. Nice to meet Woo! everybody. <laughs> oh, well? I'm Melissa Villasenor. <laughs> I'm Ashley Birch. Woo! Hi, I'm Sky Townsend. Yay! Everybody, I'm Sarita Singleton. And I am Lolo Spencer. Woo! Yeah, she Woo! is. <laughs> I am so excited for this panel. We have just so many funny women. I'm about to be humbled in a lot of ways. And if you think you're funny, so are you. But we are going to have a good time with this one. I, once again, I want to go down the line, just a rapid fire to kick us off. Because the beautiful thing about comedy is that you're always bringing people joy. You're, you're funny, you make people laugh, and in a time like this, we really, really need it. So I'm curious, we'll go down the line very quickly, what is the piece of, pro like, what is the piece of pop culture, what is the project, whether it's your own, whether it's someone else's, what is bringing you joy right now? What is, what is and bringing joy into your life? Anna, I'll start with you. <laughs> Well, obviously, it's Mariah Carey. I mean, her yes. song just... Yeah, hit. it is. Her song just hit number one again. Yeah. And for, you know, a woman of a certain age, it's exciting to know that things can just come on back. <laughs> Why not? Why not? I support it. I love it a lot. It's the holidays. It's... Well, I, I, yes, it's aging. It, it comes back every year, and it's, I don't want it to, but it continues to. It does itself. come back. It's a boomerang. Melissa, what is it for you? Uh, for joy right Yes, now? what is bringing you joy? Um, probably my dog hanging out with her, going to the park. Same. Parks. I love this. Parks. Ashley, for you? I mean, same. We just got my dog a hoodie. I became that dog mom. <laughs> so my dog. It's okay to be that dog mom. Sky? Binge watching, like, really strange reality shows. Oh, yes. I'm watching Too Hot to Handle on Netflix right now oh, about a bunch okay. of people who want to touch each other, but if they do, they get fined. And it's just so <laughs> juicy. They're like, oh, I just want to touch them all night, and it's going to be $4,000. I'm like, touch them! So, uh, <laughs> that's, that's the premise of that show? Yes, they all want to have sex, but they can't because they'll lose the money. So every time they touch, they lose Wait, the cash. That's hilarious. Hello. Do they really stick to, that, stick to the They rules? get freaky, guys. It's good. <laughs> I'm, I don't even work for Netflix, but it's, check it out. It's good. <laughs> I want to see you. Well, beyond Sky beyond and her answer, Sarita, what is bringing you joy right now? Well, I don't know about everyone else, but I'm still listening to Renaissance. Girl. Uh, <laughs> she said, I don't know about I anyone I get dressed to that every day. And it still brings me joy, so. That's, yeah. I don't know about anyone else. All right, sure, yeah, no one else. Is really <laughs> All right, and Lola, we'll come to you. What is okay, bringing you joy? Okay, so mine is going to be really random. But lentils and rice oh, yeah. has genuinely been bringing me yeah. a lot of joy. I just learned about it oh. not too long ago, and I have not stopped eating them. Which ones? Red the ones in green? the yellow bag. Oh, the it's yellow like bag. a yellow bag yes. at Costco. Yeah, you get I them in a box of like 10. No, I, it's, yeah. I know exactly which one. And they have a chickpea one, too, that's mm. and yes. fast. Yes, that you just put in the microwave. Yes. yes. Just plop it, it in the boiler. Like your microwave. <laughs> Throw a little avocado in there. Yeah, some sweet. sour cream on top. Yeah. Turn it. You all thought you were here for a comedy panel. Turns no. out it's a cooking show. It's well, actually <laughs> it's sponsored by Costco. <laughs> Importantly, yes. Costco also brings me enormous joy. You I know was what? There I this was morning, Costco. So I yes. Costco. Costco really is doing. I the bought a pair tour. of Kirkland pants. I almost wore them here. <laughs> Can't believe I didn't. Now I'm really sad I didn't. That was a miss. That was a miss room. You know what? Room. It's okay. That. Mistakes were made, yeah. and we. It's okay. We we are rolling <laughs> with them. It was, a, it was a stretchy velvet Kirkland in a in a comfortable. 12. It looks fantastic. <laughs> oh my goodness. Well, Anna, I am so glad you're here. I, I do want to start with you because this is our Women in Comedy Roundtable. You have obviously been in the comedy game. You're a legend at this point. Jeez. I mean, they know. You're a legend at this point. I would love to hear your thoughts on just like kind of the current state the of, of the comedy industry. It's yeah. very real. I'm sorry. I feel, like I, have to, I feel like I'm turning my back in order to sit appropriately in this chair. <laughs> So, I, but it, it, it's like we're on a reality show. I feel like we're on like the dating game or something. Like well, that's where at number one. Uh, tell me. But then otherwise I have to turn my back on the panel. That's and right. since I'm a legend, I don't want to do that. <laughs> so, but here's the thing about being a legend. You can do so whatever you very, want. I'm not going to It's really you challenging. And it's really, I'm activating my core. So back to the... <laughs> 
It's a cooking show, workout show, and comedy all in one. We are versatile. Yeah, it really is. So I, what's as a legend, I, I would love to get your insights on just kind of the current state of comedy. When you look at it, what do you see? What do you feel at this point? I'm excited. I'm yeah. excited for women. Honestly, I'm not just saying that because it's a, a female-driven event. I, I, it's very exciting time for comedy. You know, I mean... When I started SNL, there were three women, and we were kind of like, <laughs> there were, we were definitely a minority. And um, now it's, I just feel like there's so many new, there's so much more opportunity for so many different kinds of voices. It's, you know, for room for writer creators, some of whom are here. And yeah, you know, it's, it's really um, an exciting time to be in comedy. I feel like it's not just, the same, you know, 20 white guys making decisions anymore. So that's kind of, oh, they actually are still making decisions, but they're not, um, they, they know that they shouldn't be only making their choices. <laughs> but, <laughs> but we're coming for them. They need to stay on their toes yeah. is, is no. what is happening. <laughs> Well, and Melissa, I do want to come to you. I, I obviously, I want to know your thoughts on comedy as well, but I also very much want to know, I mean, you're, you're in life after SNL right now. You are I, in the same kind of state as, uh, as Anna Gassire. I know, here. we've been bonding. Yeah, I'm have like, you? how do yes. you handle this, Anna? It's a big transition. It is, and I, I, I've been good. I've been, um, you know, it's, I was thinking about, it's, it's very funny, because I'm in classes right now for ceramics, piano. I just want to expand. <laughs> I just want to get better at other things, at like things that I want to do. Yeah. And, uh, and I, you know, my parent, my mom doesn't like that I left the show. And it's real funny, because my mom's like, what are you doing now? Huh? <laughs> and my, and I'm like, well, I'm in classes and learning, you know? And my dad's like, cool, yeah. And my mom's like, and she just makes a sound. She goes, mm. <laughs> Which means you're a loser. But I, I, yeah, no, I'm, I've been just trying to learn, and I don't know. I'm in a learning place right now. Yeah. What is the most exciting thing you've learned? You said ceramics, but what, what have you learned? Piano. Oh, and oh, um, yeah. What can you play? I wanna, I only owe to joy for oh, that's right excellent. now. Oh, that's That's good. It's a classic. Hey, yeah. That'll make people cry. Yeah. Thank you. It, dun, 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 dun. <laughs> Love it. So, I don't know. I, I, yeah, but right now, I, I just want to learn from other people, shadow other talented people, learn how to write my own things, and and be a boss person, because I... I, I I just don't know enough, and I want to. I really want to learn from others. Well, I'm pleased folks. to say we have a piano, ba piano yeah. backstage. We're gonna bring out right no, now. No, no, no! <laughs> don't do it. No, you don't want it. No, no, no. She said I, I'm learning. I don't. I don't want to play it on stage right now. No, I'm absolutely kidding. I would never do that to you, but someday I will. Uh, Ashley, I want to. I want to come to you next because what I love about you is like with women, you you do so much. We, you do voice acting and you do in front of the camera acting. I am just so enthralled by everything that you do. But I mean, Melissa talks about learning these things. Talk to me about executing these things, right? You're do, they're, they're different things, but they're also the same in a lot of ways. Just how, how do you, I mean, wh why? Wow. <laughs> why? I mean, I what are you doing? <laughs> but I mean, but what, what is the joy in, in being able to do both voiceover acting and then being in front of the camera? What is the, the excitement there? Well, the thing that I really like about voiceover, and Melissa could probably speak to this too, but um, is that it matters not at all what you look like. Um, you know, I've played weird uh, arsonists that are 10 years old. I've played, you know, <laughs> I've played grandmas. I've played, so there's just a lot of uh, freedom and versatility in voiceover. Um, and on camera, you're more restricted by what you look like if you fit the look of the role. Mm -hmm. um, but at the end of the day, it's still, it's all acting. So it's the same craft, it's the same chops that you need. But, um, you know, voice acting is my first love. And I really do love how, how much versatility there is and, and what you can do. Should I ask you to do voices right now? Please don't. No, please, please, <laughs> please, please I beg do of not. you. <laughs> no, I would never. <laughs> But I do, I do love that for you. I love that you get to do both. And then, Sky, I, I do want to come to you. As Anna mentioned, it is an exciting time for women in comedy right now. And Black Lady Sketch Show, let's talk about yes. it. You guys, so good. Guys. Thank you. You have, the show has carved out such a lane for itself, and it's doing all these incredible things. I mean, what does it mean to you to be able to be part of a, a female cast who is killing sketch comedy? Because it's a very niche area of things to do. What does that mean to you? Wow, that was a great question. Thank you so much. My pants are so tight right now. I was like thinking about my pants and what you just said. Um, <laughs> wow. Okay, you know, it, it's interesting because growing up, um, I've always been obsessed with sketch comedy. I didn't know that like 
doing voices wasn't normal because as a kid, like it was just how I spoke. I'd be like, mom, I really feel like we should do, you know? And she was like, okay, girl, whatever. And then um, I started seeing, you know, uh, Austin Powers. And then I saw Jim Carrey. And then, you know, I saw the Waynes. And then I saw Eddie Murphy. And I was like, why aren't there more black women that do this, right? And why aren't there more weird black women, right? Because I, you know, like I was having a conversation with someone. They were like, look, everyone can do a British accent. Everyone can do the hood girl, find something else. And I'm like, Okay, so I made it a challenge to learn how to do Dorothy from The Wizard of Oz, to learn how to study people's mouths and like, you know, really create characters. So I, I always thought, you know, if you're gonna be on sketch, like you just, you're either on SNL or you're not, right? Like that's all that there was. So for this, I was like, okay, there's another platform that potentially can heighten my chances of me doing this. And um, when I auditioned, they asked for three characters. I gave them nine and I was like, I really want this job because I really gotta be on the show. And just seeing them allow us to show, you know, how unique and how strange black women can be in comedy is exciting because I don't just wanna be the stereotypical friend of the girl that's like, hell no. I'm like, no, I wanna be the girl that's from Argentina, you know? So it's, uh, it's exciting because they're finally letting me be a little bit weirder. And I think allowing us to be weird black women uh, doesn't happen often in comedy. We always see the sassy friend and I didn't want to be that. And so to be on a show that's allowing me to be as strange as I naturally am is an honor. What an answer. That was a long ass answer. I'm sorry. I didn't want to be the girl on the panel who did the long answer. And no, that I was heard. amazing. Oh my that was God. so good. It's real, okay. it's, it's, I go to work and I'm allowed to be weird and yeah. it's encouraged and I get to use my whole body at my job, you know? And so it's, it's exciting. Yeah. So when does the strangeness kick in today? Oh, it's already <laughs> kicked in. I mean, my pants are like, girl, take I'm these off. I'm messing with you, Scott. I'm just messing with you. We had dinner last night. We had a good old time, didn't we? We did. We had we dinner, did. and so we are, we are old friends. We and are. We met yesterday. Yeah, um, we did. But Serena, I want to come to you. Speaking of, you know, we talk about Black Lady Sketch, they've been going for, you know, four years now, four seasons. You guys, with Rap Shit, you got a season two. You're very new, and it's, it's the new and exciting stage thing. Yeah. Yes. So what is that feeling for you to be bringing something new and exciting and seeing it resonate with people to get that season two renewal? I, what is that, how, how has it been for you? And what a time right now for you. Yeah, it's still like, I, I think I'm still, it hasn't fully landed on me. Mm. And I think that's a good thing. Cause I just want to stay focused mm. and not get intimidated or concerned about like, what was the magic of, you know, knowing nothing. <laughs> <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Because um, really, that, that's how I got through season one was knowing nothing and showing up every day like, oh, okay. <laughs> Surprise, let's, let's tackle it. Um, but yeah, I, I, it's really exciting. I'm really grateful for what I get to do. I look around my room. We're working on season two right now. And like, we're all, we all speak the same language, but we all have different per perspectives in it. And we bring some, we have these great, rich conversations and stuff that I've never seen before. And it's just like, wow, I've never seen this shit. Like, and the fact that we get to do this and put this on TV and that people enjoy it. Whenever someone tells me that I love rap shit or I watch rap shit, I'm just like, ah. first of all, I'm like, wow, we made a show called Rap Shit and they <laughs> let us do that. <laughs> And I get mild panics about that in the shower sometimes. Like, it's called rap shit. <laughs> like, I mean, but I mean, it's, I don't know, it's, it's amazing. I'm so excited for you. It's, you. It really, it's, oh, I just, I love seeing something new come and seeing it thrive. And that is what you are doing and you're crushing it. So congratulations. You. You're doing amazing. So good. Yes, give it up for her, please. And of course, Lola, I want to come to you now because Sex Lives of College Girls. It yes. is like a black lady sketch. It is thriving. I love everyone on stage here is thriving. But also, Season three just got announced too. So yeah. We got <laughs> yeah. We love, we love it. We love to hear it. And you know, to, to words, I'm excited to be here. So <laughs> we're going to stutter through a little bit, but we're going to, we're going to reel it Take in. your time, sis. Take your time. <laughs> That's what we say in the church. I, I appreciate <laughs> I appreciate you. But I mean, with season three being announced, I would love to know what kind of conversations are happening now, right? Because there is so much that's happening. There are things that have found their group. There are new shows that are coming. How, what are the conversations like on Sex Lives of College Girls of like, how can we keep pushing this forward? How can we keep making this interesting? Your character stays interesting to you. What are the conversations at this point? I mean, the conversations have really just been about like, what are women really going through? And how do we get the opportunity to explore our sexualities and make the mistakes that we do in real life and not try to be these flawless women who 
knows everything when it comes to having relationships, whether it's in college or as young adult women outside of college. And so those are the conversations that we have. And I know like specifically with my character of Jocelyn, we've had those conversations of like, how can we push Jocelyn to be more than anyone would ever expect? Like breaking out of that stereotype of like, oh, the disabled girl can only date so much or do so much. It's like, no, let's, let's take it up as high as we can go. And I encourage that. And I, and I take on the responsibility of letting our showrunner, Justin Noble, know like I'm okay and I'm comfortable with sharing these stories, sharing this perspective, because in college, I was a wild girl. And so it is a very authentic experience to navigate dating and what that looks like, and then from my unique perspective. So those are usually just the conversations that we have and, and letting the showrunner know that it's okay to push my character further than you guys think you may be comfortable with because there's all the sensitivity of like, can we say this, can we do this, and is this okay, and are people gonna believe it when they see it, and all those different conversations, I'm like, no, they're gonna believe it, trust me. I'm gonna make it believable, because it is my life. <laughs> well, and I, I, wanna, I wanna hone in on something you said there, talking to your showrunner, and, and having that conversation to be at that point where you feel confident enough and you feel strong enough to be like, look, this is my input and I want you to take it. How did, that, that is a hard point for people to reach, and especially in comedy, because it's like, well, it, it's so subjective all of the time. Yeah. But what was it for you that got you to that point that you were, that you were like, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna use my voice and I'm going, and they're going to listen. Like, how did you get there? Ooh, well, that's a journey just in general, just in life. Uh, True. But I would say like, not treating this opportunity as the only one that I'll ever have for the rest of my life. Mm. And just knowing that if for whatever reason, if I were to say something and I get reprimanded or fired or whatever the case is, I would hate that, that would suck. But at the same time, I would know like, okay, well then my journey has stopped here and then there's another opportunity to come after this. But it would ultimately deprive one, my community as a disabled person, but also as a black woman to not speak up and share my voice and what the authenticity of my experiences are. So for me, I'm like, I'm not gonna do everybody a disservice. I'm gonna like keep it real and just say, hey, I'm not trying to, you know, roll over nobody's toes, but I'm gonna let y'all know, <laughs> this is what y'all gonna have to do. If y'all wanna keep it real, if y'all wanna talk about authenticity and inclusivity and all these buzzwords, like, be honest about it, and a lot of times, and give grace to people to know that they may not know. You know, so just give them grace. Okay, if they don't know, tell them. Now, if they don't listen, then that's the problem. True. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes. Well, Lola, you talk about, you know that it's not the only opportunity that you're ever gonna have. And Melissa, I feel like you can kind of speak to that at this point because there's gotta be that terror, like with SNL being what it is, there's gotta be that terror of like, oh God, what do I do next? My mother is very, like putting a lot of pressure on me. But you are doing so much, you're learning, and you have a book, like you're a writer now, and I, it's just, I, what has it been like for you to kind of explore that other creative side of yourself? Because writing is a whole different animal. Yeah, I mean, Man, I don't know. I'll be honest. I, I feel there's a lot. I just feel it. I feel like there's more things to explore within me, and I just want to keep expanding on what interests me and what I enjoy, what lights me up and makes me feel alive. And art does that. My book, it's called Whoops, I'm Awesome. Uh, <laughs> and it has a lot of artwork in there, and I, I, I really love, I, I, I just have a lot of visions, and I like to listen to what comes up for me for my art and, um, but yeah, I think I'm in the same, I, I mean, I am in that place where I'm like, yeah, I, I don't want, I wanna stay open because we don't know where the magic will be. Keep the doors and heart open because everywhere there is opportunity and possibility, so. Yes, yeah. and I, of course, I love the title, Whoops, I'm Awesome. I, I love it a lot, I really do. It's it is so the kind of good. confidence I strive for, but you have said that your book is for adults and their inner child, and that's such yeah. a specific audience, and I feel like it's me, uh, because my inner child is clearly very much, uh, you know, out in the open, but why, but like, but why that audience? Because that's a specific thing to target. What was it that felt important about that? I, because we get so serious. 
And I and even me, I just want to go, shut up, Melissa, and have some fun and just shake myself, you know? And uh, I I yeah, I just wanted to get to that loony side when when of course the time is right, you know, not always. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I just I feel like people I want people to loosen up, loosen their their the tightness on them, you know. Um, and be creative and uh, goofy. <laughs> Yeah. Well, we talk about the goofy side, we talk about the loony side. Sky! Sky! <laughs> the way that she yeah. just felt terror going down. Surprise. But, I mean, you, you talked about a little, a little bit earlier that you get to be weird with, with the yeah. show, and you get to embrace that side of yourself. I, I just need to, how much fun are you guys having on set? Like, what, again, I, it sounds cliche to say, like, what are the conversations there? But again, that's the beauty of it, is you get to come and play. So what is having that freedom like for you? What, ha, like, what, how has that impacted your, just you as a performer? Yeah, well, you know, what's unique about our show is we get the scripts in the beginning of the season, and then we decide who the characters are. So it'll just say Michelle and she's an art teacher. And from that, I can decide she's from Argentina and like, you know, whatever I want to do. So I then, I, when I came in, it was a little annoying, I know, because I do full mood boards for my characters, but I did like head to toe, we have the freedom to create these people. So I'm like, hear me out. She has a pencil thin eyebrows, her bangs go up to here. She wears a high waters. I want her socks to be this with new balances. I mean, I will do head to toe, you know, because we get the freedom to pick these people. Right. Um, so well, it's, yeah, thank you. Um, so it's really, really fun because uh, every day we're a new person. So I might show up as a man from Harlem one day and then the next day, you know, I'm like talking like a doubt. Like any day I could just, I, and I every night have to bury them. So it's, it's really fun and we have a lot of freedom to create these characters, but also um, the, the tough side of it is if you create such complex characters, you must bury them every night. Mm. You know, so like, I'm like a freak for this. I mean, I love creating characters to where it's like every character waves different. They might hold their mouth different. They might walk different. They might flirt different. So I think through who this person is and then at night, you know, we have the freedom to create. So if you create a little too hard, you then gotta bury the character. Um, but I, it's, it's a gift and a curse to have that much freedom because Wait, I never know. what does that look like, burying a character? Is there like a ritual? It's a little, okay, so, oh my God, it's gonna get weird in here. Sorry. Okay, 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 so like, <laughs> oh God. So like every guy I date, I make a character off of, right? Yeah, yeah like, you, like there's, a, there's this very sexy guy from New York who used to call me sweetheart, and he'd always be like, yo, sweetheart, come over here, sweetheart, sweetheart. So bearing a character all day long, I'm, I eat lunch as a character. I'm like, can I get the salmon and the mashed potatoes? And then at the end of the day, I like literally have to shake them off because the next day I'm somebody else. But what happens at the end of season is sometimes they stick on me and you know, my, my best friend and my cousins here, they'll come out in stories. I can't really shake certain people. It's really scary actually. My mom's like, wow. Um, but yeah, it's, you kind of just have to say goodbye to them and if they return on another season, but you have 24 hours to give your all as this person. And so to think through every little detail is giving them justice. Yeah. You've exhausted yeah. them by the end yeah. of the day. Yeah, yeah, I show up as them, and then you leave the hair and makeup trailer, and every interaction is in character, and then good night, you kiss them goodbye, and you wipe off the makeup, and then the next day you're somebody else, wow. which mentally That's is a lot. Wait, so <laughs> I'm like, wait, I need therapy. So no. <laughs> I mean, well, but like, right, but so to be clear then, theoretically, a stranger yeah. has met you as a totally different person. Oh, yeah. Oh, you know, I, I played a guy this last season, and I came in being very aggressive, saying inappropriate things to the background dancers, thinking they knew. And uh, I get, you know, I was really, I'm grabbing my bowls and I'm like, you know, whatever. And this girl looks at me and I giggled and she goes, you're a girl. I said, I'm honored. You thought, she goes, I thought. I said, oh my God. So yeah, strangers, they meet that person. So if they're a background actor, they don't know. They met that person in full hair and makeup. And, and it's so fun, you know? It's a little kooky, but yeah. it's fun, yeah. It's fun. That, that's wild. It's very I, weird. I'm thinking about all the strangers who have met Sky at some point, <laughs> yeah. and like, we'll like, maybe see this panel, and they're like, oh, that way, oh, okay, great. <laughs> I, I, Serena, I do, I wanna come to you, because as a showrunner, of course, you get the freedom in creating characters and whatnot, in a little bit of a different <laughs> sense. <laughs> in, are we good? Yeah? I'm, I am present. <laughs> New Sky was gonna cause trouble on this panel, but I mean, I'm you, a good girl. I'm a good girl. <laughs> but but you get to you get to craft these characters and you work with Issa Rae to do it. My God, like what a person to collaborate with. But you also have that freedom, just maybe in a different sense than the acting side. But what does your freedom look like on on Rapture to be able to do this? 
Ooh, what does my freedom look like? I mean, it's being a showrunner, it's all about making decisions, right? So it's, it's about my taste. It's about, you know, the things that resonate for me, the things that feel real to me that I want to put on screen. So, I mean, I, I, it's collaborative. I have a great team of writers. And, you know, as we're talking about things, I, I feel like, I guess, like, my freedom and my, is in the choice, the, the choices that I get to make. Yeah. This is this is the story that I think that um, will resonate or feel most real to um, our audience. Um, even in like, you know, we get to jump into fashion and music, like that's in social media and those sort of conversations and what people are saying. Like there's, you know, all of those little decisions that um, I think really make a, a big impact, I think feel cool and freeing, especially because at the end you have to just make the decision to move on and release right. it. And there's some freedom in that. And that's why I'm also like really drawn to what you were saying about bearing these characters because there's like a, I think we can get so attached to things. Yeah. But like a big journey for me was like just making a choice and, and not second guessing it. Mm -hmm. Like this is it. This was what my gut said. This is what I like. Let me trust it and not worry about do you like that too or do you like that too? Like let's just do it and move on and detach. Now the next thing, I'm a creative being. <laughs> I keep creating, you know? So I don't know, I think there's freedom in that. Um, yeah, and working with Issa, that's like, that's the way she works as well, so. It's, yes, it's give a it up for team. Issa Rae, come on. Yeah. Absolutely. I also, I wanna to touch back to something that Lola was speaking to earlier in terms of finding your voice and being able to make that decision like you were talking about. There was a conversation at one point for Rap Shit about you having a co-show runner and yeah. then you decided against doing that. And I love that for you. That is the kind of confidence, especially as a woman in the industry, to know that like, you know what? I feel good, I wanna take this on on my own. I know that I can do that. <laughs> Walk me through that decision though, because like that, that's the internal, I feel like. No, Walk for real, yeah. like that, it was a moment. Cause I, first of all, when Issa asked me, I was just like, whoa, are you sure? And I thought, she's just, I don't know what's going on with her right now. This, I'm going to forget about this phone call. She didn't run this by anybody before calling me. You know, that was, those were my thoughts. And then um, it, she came back and she meant it. And I was like, oh my gosh. And so I had seen what showrunners do and I was like, oh, it's a lot harder than what I saw. <laughs> so, and I was like, okay, yes, a kosher runner makes a lot of sense. Um, but then I had that first meeting, because um, I just I wanted to deliver. Like, this is Issa's second scripted show after Insecure. Like, I wanted to make sure that it was good. I love her so much, I don't want to let her down. And so, I, as I was meeting with kosher runners, I was like, oh, you don't get it. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I'm, I'm realizing that you don't get it, and also, but then I'm going to have to get on the same page with you about the choices that are being made or the vision for the show. The vision is so important. And I'm like, you know what? If it's, if it's conversations we have to have, that's a writer's room. I could do that. <laughs> you know what I mean? And I'm like, and if it's decision making and understanding and knowing this world and the characters, I know I got that. And so I was like, Issa, I think I can do this. And it was a really scary conversation to have. Um, to say, hey, I, I don't want to do the coach runner thing anymore. I think I can do this. But Issa supported me 100% and was like, all right, and if you have questions, I got you. Like, we'll, we'll be in this together. And, yes, and we did. Yeah. <laughs> so good. Yeah. yeah. So good. I love it. And you love to see women supporting each other like that, truly. Ashley, I do. I want to come to you because in addition to acting on Mythic Quest, you've also written. You have written for Mythic Quest, and that is, that's a whole different beast. We can talk about acting, and we can talk about show running, but writing is a terrifying concept to me. I will, <laughs> I will be fully honest. But talk to me about writing for this show, because obviously this is a show that is near and dear to you. It's something that you care about. So at what point did you reach the decision that like, yeah, I, I, I wanna write for this? What was, what was that thought process like for you? Um, first of all, I want to say how inspiring all of you are. I just want to say, I think, I hope you guys are getting a lot out of this panel, because I am. I just have loved hearing your responses to things. Anyway, um, I actually started as a writer. So I, I, I was a writer first oh. on the show, yes. and, then, and then got cast after. So um, it, it kind of started with that. And I, I really love being in a writer's room because it, it's collaborative in a, in a way that you really have to put your ego to the side. And it feels like you're just with a bunch of smart people trying to solve a, a very frustrating puzzle. Um, <laughs> sometimes very frustrating. Um, but to me, and especially in TV, it's to me the most important part. Like if the script doesn't work, it doesn't work. So um, yeah, I, I really, I love that part of the process and it tickles a part of my brain that, you know, 
acting doesn't reach. So I, I really like that aspect of it. You really do it all. You write and you voice act and you act. You're just, you're multifaceted and I love that for you. I, I want to ask about one episode in particular, the one that you did write, or one of them, excuse me, Everlight. A very, very dear friend of mine told me literally just yesterday because I, t I was bragging that I get to speak to you and that he doesn't. I was, I take full advantage. Uh, but he told me that watching that episode helped him kind of process a lot of things that he didn't realize he needed to process during the pandemic. Yeah, and he said that he like didn't even realize that he needed to grapple with these things, and then watching it, he was like, oh, and it helped him kind of really get through some stuff. What is that, I mean, what does that mean to you to know that something that you write has that kind of resonance? I, you look a little bit terrified now. No, no, <laughs> it's, uh, <laughs> I was like, oh. it was tenderness. Um, yeah, okay. I, 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 it's, I mean, it's kind of why we do it, right? I mean, right. it's so meaningful to hear that. Um, especially, you know, uh, if you're not familiar, in Mythic Quest, we had an episode uh, all about the quarantine, about the lockdown, and then the episode that followed that was called Everlight, which is basically the episode where everyone comes back to the office. And that was kind of a tall order, and we had so many conversations about how much do we want to acknowledge the pandemic, how much do we want to put it to bed. And the spirit of it really is meant to be like a sort of hopeful, loving note after this very scary thing that everyone has gone through. And so it's very meaningful to me that he had that experience because I think we were experiencing it as well, filming it, you know, to have the, I mean, we were one of the first productions to go back. Um, so it was a, a, a sort of a strange experience to be in that situation. And also we had so much gratitude to be able to be around people that we cared about, doing something that we love. So that episode's really special, and, and that was the intention behind it. So it's also like a, woo, okay, great. <laughs> that came across. We, we did our job. Thank God. <laughs> um, so yeah, it, it's, it's really meaningful, and, and to, especially working on a comedy, to have something that, is, that touches people as well as makes them laugh is, is a really meaningful thing. I, I really love that balance. When something can make me laugh just as much as it makes me cry, that's when I'm like, oh, you guys are so talented. But it is, <laughs> it's a roller coaster of emotions. I, do, I want to hone in on something that you were just speaking to in, in terms of putting egos aside. But Anna, I want to come to you on this because you have done so many things at this point. Again, I'm, I'll keep saying it. You are a legend. Like, I'm going to keep saying it. But you've earned the right to be picky at this point. So what is it for you that makes a project worth doing now? Like, with American Auto, what was it that made you say, yes, this is, this is what I want to be doing right now? Um, yeah, I mean, definitely, I think the only thing really, I, I don't know that I'm a legend, but I'm, I've been around a minute, and, and I, I do feel... Um, that, that time does just sort of afford you confidence. I mean, these, you know, every one of our stories is sort of like, okay, I just gotta try it, and sort of, you know, life is one big exercise in cognitive behavioral therapy. We're like, well, I didn't get fired, so I can say that to myself next time, I wanna try this, you know, which is sort of the point that you're making. And I think that, um, I think it's just feeling more and more confident about choices. So I know that I like smart writing and I really know that I like working with nice people and that that's incredibly important to me. Um, having lived through the 90s and a lot of not nice workplaces, I feel like it's, um, I mean, you know, whatever, and just in general, I, I, it's important to have a collaborative environment. And Justin Spitzer, our showrunner, had an incredible reputation. He's a very collaborative writer. He's a very... Um, I don't know, I just, and I wanted to play, the, the role that I play is, is a female CEO, one of the first, the, the first female CEO of a big macho male company, and um, she comes from Big Pharma, so she's kind of morally ambiguous, um, <laughs> but she's running an automotive company, and she doesn't know how to drive, and she doesn't really care to know how to drive, <laughs> and what I like about it, though, is that so much of the character is she's this weird combination of deeply insecure about the industry and the people, and, but at the same time, she's super smart and kind of an, a good CEO, so it's, it's, it was just a fun challenge, and I think Honestly, this is gonna, like, a little bit, it's tough because she's a female leader and it's hard to know, like, people still kind of hate female leaders a little bit. And so there is this, like, you know, not to get too political about it, but sometimes there's this, like, Hillary Clinton moment of it where you're like, God, she just can't help it, but, but be loathed. <laughs> you know, and I, God, I probably really shouldn't have said that publicly, but, you know, I, I, I mean, I, you know, I, I mean that I think it's this still ongoing conundrum, like, it's, that it's kind of tough being a, a woman in her 50s who's in a leadership 
position. So it's fun to explore that artistically, and um, I do just think corporate America itself, we haven't really seen a lot of C-suite comedies. We've seen a lot of dramas about it, but we haven't seen sort of the, you know, the other side of situa like all these human resources situations that we're all dealing with at our workplaces now, and I think it's kind of fun to be in a real-time uh, corporate comedy that's really grappling with a lot of these issues. It's also a more diverse cast, it's a more, it feels more relevant, it is a traditional NBC half hour single camera, but it is, it's, it is, it's more diverse and it's more um, representative of, I think, real American workplaces too. So that's kind of fun. I don't know, I think that was your question. It was. <laughs> also, you know, Hillary for president, obviously. <laughs> I just, In I, summary. <laughs> I, just, I, I love that you're able to still get, you know, find the fun in it because when you when you do it for as long as you have, there's a point potentially, at least for some, that maybe the fun goes away. So how do, how do you keep it fun for yourself aside from exciting characters like an American Auto? Well, I create. I mean, I think all of us do the same. We, I create stuff. I mean, that's it. Really does come down to being involved in um, not not taking yourself too seriously, and and you know, Melissa and I do come from, you know, there is a certain thing that happens when you're on SNL that you're just like, well, I'm gonna have to figure out how to renovate the house by myself, I guess. You know, that's like what you're doing. You know, you're kind of mini show running every single sketch that you're in. Even there is a writer on them, but you have to, you have to make a lot of decisions quickly and it's fun and it's, a, it's empowering to, to have a moment where you're like, no, I, I, I remember Tom Broker, who is now one of the producers of the show, but he was a costume designer when I was there. And he, Thursday, when the show, would, when the sketches would get picked on Wednesday night, we would, go into this room and have to talk to the hair and the makeup and to the costumers and discuss like what your sort of vision for the character was. And he, <laughs> he had his mom's church directory from Indianapolis and it was like the greatest tool for 80% of my characters. I'd be like, <laughs> I want to play Maureen Fisher, you know, just like, <laughs> just like it's amazing hair, to, hair to, yeah, anyway, so it's, it's you know, it's it, having to make a quick decision and think that so it's right. Cool. Yeah. Well, Sky, take note of that one. A, a church well, director. She does it. I mean, she I know Maureen yeah. Fisher, actually. Yeah. She's, she's, she's a wonderful. She's my mom. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I, just mean, I just mean in terms of, in terms of picking characters. But. Well, I mean, it's cool to hear people, frankly, you know, younger than me with a lot of these lessons already metabolized. Like, I feel like it took me all this time to figure it out. You know, I just... You know, I, base, I just got into the WGA last year, you know, and I've been writing my entire career. Everyone, everyone just so, went, what? Yeah, Same. because at SNL, we're not credited as writers, and when I finally, I, Rachel Dratch and I wrote this Christmas movie together, and, and I was like, actually in the WGA, so yeah. So it's a funny thing, like it's, you know, just keep at it. <laughs> <laughs> One of these days, I'm probably gonna be in the Olympics. <laughs> Oh, I would be so pleased to see you in the Olympics. I, I would be remiss if I didn't ask, though. We talked at the beginning of this panel about things coming back. I would be remiss if I didn't ask, listen, Mean Girls, the musical movie, like, oh. it's, it's, it's coming back. We know you got a voice. I just, what, oh. are you up for it? Are you doing it? Of course it? I'm up for it. I mean, that's really <laughs> up like, to yeah. Tina. That's up to Tina and Jeff. I mean, it's a fantastic musical. I don't know if you've seen it, but it's, it's. It, I've not I've, had the pleasure. It's delightful. Um, but yeah, it's kind of one woman, Katie's mom and um, Regina's mom. They're all sort of one lady mm. made into, I don't know how they're going to do it in the movie, though. It's going to be great. It is going to be great. Lola Spento's co-star is yeah. going to yeah. be Shout in it. Yeah, shout out to Renee Rapp. Yeah, yes. Renee Rapp is going to be in it. Uh, that, was, that was a nice transition. I like how we did that. Because Lola, I am coming to you next. We're not going to talk about Renee Rapp, even though she is absolutely She's incredible. Amazing. We love Renee. We yes. love Renee so much. But what I want to talk to you before our time runs out here is what I love about the sex life of the college girls is that it, it, the, it's in the title. It's the sex lives of college girls. I feel like even now in 2022, there is still this weirdness about like raunchy comedy, about, about comedy around sex lives. There, it's just, it's like this weird thing that people don't love to talk about. So I, what kind of impact have you seen the show have? Like, what does it mean to you to be able to talk about these things, to do comedy around these kind of things? It, it, it's, it's exciting. Yeah, you know, I just get approached by a lot of women that are like, oh my God, I relate to this character, or I relate to that character, and I just love that you guys are having so much fun, and, and you know, the dialogue that they give me all the time, because I'm, my character's a smart ass, so it's just like, I'm always being a bitch, and it's great, and you know, <laughs> and people love it. People love, like, how much fun that the show really is, and I think that's the part that I've been seeing more and more, and a lot of people always say it's like there's a lot of shows about high school, there's a lot of shows about like 
already being out of college and already like an adult woman, but there aren't many college focused shows. And so that's kind of like the biggest impact is everyone talking about like, oh, I remember when I was in college or I wish I was like whichever character on our show, like Bella in college or Layton or Whitney. And so, um, yeah, that's pretty much been like the biggest impact that I've seen so far is just people really being excited about almost like either reliving their college years or if they didn't get to go to college, they're like, oh, is this what it was like? And I'm like, well, for me, <laughs> yes, it was in many ways. A lot of stuff I don't know if you can recreate on camera, but it was a good time, you know? And so it's just having that, that fun and that dialogue of women really feeling like they're being seen um, during such a vulnerable time in, in a lot of women's lives. So yeah, I would probably say that's probably the biggest impact I've seen. Yes, and college is certainly the time to relive. High school, absolutely not. No, no, we don't want to go back there. We don't, we don't need to college, talk about though, those readers. College, though, turn up. <laughs> I mean, I imagine that was part of the draw for you from the beginning, though, was it's an original concept. It, it, like you mentioned, it is, it's set in college, and it is this kind of raunchy comedy. Is that part of what you drew you to it that made you say, like, ooh, yeah, I want to be part of this one? Oh, yes, absolutely. I saw the sides, and I said, oh, yeah, babes, I'm going to do this one. <laughs> and so, but it, it really was. It was that just being completely unfiltered. And then, of course, you know, when Mindy Kaling's attached, you're just going to try your best. But, no, but it, it, was, it was that. It's having that freedom that excitement and then especially again just being a disabled character that none of my dialogue has anything to do with my disability that it really is about who I want to show up as how I want to show up and then just being honest about that and not needing to have my character be so leaned on upon like what the disability is and what that means like I wouldn't mind addressing it I think that that would be dope but it's good to know that a character like mine can be made that has nothing to do with what everyone else sees um, because it is bigger than that you know it really is about the humanity of it and so yeah it's it's just really dope I've just been manifesting a rom-com with Michael B. Jordan I'm just throwing that out there because I know there's a lot of look there's a lot of powerful women in here and I don't know who's an exec or who knows who <laughs> but that's my next role. I want it. I love I'm it. I'm just saying. I'm just throwing it out there. I'm going to be honest. I mean, listen, rom-coms are having a comeback right now. That's what it, I'm saying. Yeah, it's, it is that time. Throw it out there. I want this for you, Lolo. And Thank it, you so Michael much. Michael B. Jordan, I know you're going to be watching this panel specifically. So <laughs> yes, please, please, please give her a call. Ladies, unfortunately, that is our time. But thank you so very awesome. much thank for you. being on this panel. Yes, give it up for all of them. You are all so very funny. I love and appreciate you guys. I love and appreciate you guys. Thank you for, for coming to this panel. I hope that you've enjoyed it. And enjoy the rest of the summit, everyone. Thank you. Thank you.